So now in this video, we're going to use a 741 op amp as a voltage follower. And it's a pretty simple circuit. I've done other videos on it, but here's another uh, twist on it. So I found this diagram. I made it a long time ago. And uh, usually, for one, you see the output directly connected to the inverting input. At least I think that's what you mostly see. And also, the uh, 741 op amp, it usually has a split supply. So zero volts is somewhere in between the middle of the uh, rail voltages and you might have 12 volts positive and 12 volts negative in relationship to that zero volts for a total of 24 volts but because uh, the op amp likes to work in that middle range of the uh, total voltage but in this case we're just going to go to the negative rail with the negative voltage pin and uh, but the main takeaways the voltage we feed to the non-inverting input will be the same voltage at the output because of the feedback. When you have negative feedback here, the op amp tries to hold the voltage at the output exactly the same as the inverting input. It looks at the differences and outputs to hold them uh, the same, as long as you have feedback right there. It needs that feedback. and uh, Otherwise, it just kind of goes out of control, which may be what you want. That's what you want with a comparator. So, pin layout right here. You just want it to go to either extreme when one is slightly higher than the other with a comparator. Now, as I said before, this is an old sheet. I got into a habit of putting the plus after the V. It should be in front of the V, but uh, not end of the world. So, this is the positive side of the power supply, pin number seven. You can see I already got that plugged in there. Negative side of the power supply, pin number four. Again, this is usually not ground. It's usually a negative voltage in relationship to ground, but the output's not going to go all the way to the negative rail. That's not the purpose of uh, this video, so we're not worried about this uh, going from rail to rail. So we're always going to be somewhere in between, so it's okay to use a single supply. It's awkward though. Some people will get mad that uh, I'm doing this. But in any case, we have the uh, non-inverting input right there. Sometimes you'll just hear plus input and then negative input there, which is the inverting input. I like to say inverting and non-inverting instead of just plus and minus. Now, we come to uh, the schematic right there. Pretty straightforward right here. So, first, let's begin with the uh, negative feedback because it's off, out of the way of everything else. So, might as well put that in first. As I said before, the output feeds directly to the inverting input for a voltage follower. And so all we want to do is make the voltage at both the inverting input and non-inverting input the same, right there. So we have the feedback. And the voltage differences that the output swings to always tries to fall in line with the inverting input. So if the, the non-inverting input, I mean, right here, the non-inverting input, if it is more positive than the inverting input, then the output will go up. If it's more negative than the inverting input, then the output will go down. And so with the feedback, it's centered right to where the voltage is at the non-inverting input. So now, another thing I did, as I said before, we don't want to go all the way to the negative rail. I mean, we can. It's not end of the world. It's not going to hurt anything. But... There's going to be a zone here where it all puts probably 2 volts in that range, no matter what, until we get to a point. Then it will start raising the voltage at the uh, output. So the output can't go all the way to zero. So what we're going to do is take a 2 kilo ohm resistor. So actually it's a 2,200 ohm resistor because I don't have a 2 kilo ohm resistor in this kit. I probably have one somewhere. But... Uh, I'm just sticking with what I have from this one kit that I use. So 2,200 ohms right there. And that means we can't get all the way down to the bottom or to the negative rail when it comes to the resistance. We have that space there. And now we have a total, this is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot of about 12,200 ohms of resistance total. But we can't go all the way down. So it's going to be a little less than 10%. I'm sorry, 20% of the way down that uh, we can't get to so we will take this jumper here and put it to the non-inverting input right there 
and that's where our signal is the middle pin there is the signal that's where the wiper connects and so that's uh, that's in there pretty good you can see the three pins there the middle pin is the where the wiper is attached the other two pins are attached to the resistive element now that will set a voltage we'll look at that coming up we have here a one kilo ohm resistor because potentially we are using 12 volts so you divide that by a thousand ohms and that gives us 12 milliamps which is the same as 0 0.012 amps so you take that current times the voltage across the resistor if you have 12 volts across the resistor that would give you 0.144 watts this has a maximum wattage rating of 0.25 watts but that's a maximum you want to keep it about halfway if you can so this is slightly above halfway we do have the voltage drop of the LED though so it will uh, probably be under an eighth of a watt at that point but even if it's slightly above not end of the world so we're gonna put that one spot away from that jumper there now we're gonna add an LED long lead the anode is that side short lead the cathodes over here this just gives us a visual the visual is not as important as the voltage readings for this particular circuit but it's still helpful nonetheless so we zoom back I have my uh, power supply here set to 12 volts a maximum of 30 milliamps to make sure we don't damage anything if something goes wrong we hit the uh, power supply and there you can see we have the uh, LED on if I set this up to the maximum now you can see we got uh, 9 milliamps of current and with uh, without the LED it might be uh, 12 milliamps in fact we can check that right now let's go directly and this resistor is already pretty warm let's go directly to there and there you can see it's almost 12 milliamps so it actually doesn't go and I'm gonna go quick because it gets hot it doesn't go all the way to the positive rail either but I think it's going closer we'll take a look at that coming up there's limitations to what the output can do so that's why I'm doing a number of videos on this the more you work with them do different uh, circuits the more you learn about the components now that's all the way to the positive rail first let's go all the way down to as low as we can go with the trim pot you can see the LED is not very bright but it is lit up a bit so I don't think the voltage is going to be spot on here but uh, we can take a look so the voltage is in relationship to the negative rail right now as I said there's no uh, halfway point that is ground ground is the full negative right there and so we'll get the voltage there try not to short anything out and there you can see 2.2 volts which uh, makes sense since we're using a 2200 ohm resistor now we go over here and actually we have the same voltage so that's good so we did a good job with that and uh, I'm not gonna prove we can't go to the negative rail with the 741 op amp that's uh, proven all the time so now we raise the voltage so the LED got brighter 5.8 volts at the input and we have 5.8 volts at the output that's because of the feedback the inverting input is looking at the voltage of the output and the op amp is doing whatever it can to hold those voltages the same all it can do though is change the voltage of the output and so it's falling in line now let's go all the way up actually not quite all the way yet let's do one more we actually saw three voltages that were the same 9.7 and 9.7 right there spot on the same let's go all the way and see if we fall how far we fall from 12 volts so I haven't done this in a while but since I wrote 11.5 I'm guessing it's 11.5 but I may have been wrong I may have uh, quickly put together the data sheet or the uh, the diagram and uh, got the voltage wrong so there you can see just shy of 12 volts slightly shy and there you can see actually it's closer to 10.5 volts so I probably should have wrote 10.5 on the diagram instead of 11 if we do need more voltage at the output that's that's not the maximum voltage I can output that's just as close as it can get to 12 volts so we're gonna be pushing the resistor a little bit more than we were before but now we got uh, 14 volts that's within 2 volts and uh, now we come back and so it's going to throw off the voltage that we got at the uh, trim pot it's going to go up a bit so now it's 
14 volts so it would do that no matter where it was along here wherever it was when we raise the voltage of the power supply it would raise the voltage here a fraction also but the main takeaway is whatever the voltage is that's what the output so now we can get above 12 so we could lower this a little bit and uh, maybe that'll be 12 right there so yeah we're yeah we got a range where we move this it's not gonna change much so there we go 10.88 let's just stick with that since uh, we got there that's what we want for whatever reason and that's what we got in imagination land so there you can see this the voltage is the same there so that's that's it for a voltage uh, follower and you don't have to use a DC one as long uh, DC op amp there are some that are made to go to the negative rail but in this video we put a resistor there to prevent us from going to the negative rail we could have also put a resistor to the positive rail to prevent us from going there so that we would know as long as we turn this we're getting a change at the output if we wanted to there's a lot of variations depends on what you need you know but uh, just for a simple demonstration like this I think this circuit is pretty good as I said before 741 op amp like a lot of op amps is meant for split power supply but that doesn't mean they're useless in single supply you know it just means they can't go to the rail and as long as you stay away from the rail it's no big deal so thanks for watching I will see you in the next video